The stage is set. The bright lights are on. Welcome along to obviously Fight Talk episode 82. I said Fight Talk really harsh <laughs> really? there. Yeah, what was that all about? No idea. I'm now O'Keefe and I am joined as always by the handsome Robert Pallon. Everything's backwards including time. Yes, um, so if you're watching this and then you watch guests in a bit, it didn't go from night to day. We're just recording this at the very end. But Rob82, a big shout out as always to MMAMix.com. They're obviously good because they're with, obviously, Fight Talk. Fight Star Ireland, everything you need under two roofs. Check them out and send, tell them the last from obviously Fight Talk sends you. And also say congratulations to uh, Stephen yes. Clare on congrats. the arrival Big of little baby Carter. Uh, the new cameraman for Fight Star Media uh, will be on duty um, <laughs> Soon enough, I'd imagine. But yeah, welcome, welcome to the world, little Carter, um, and to FeelSupreme.co.uk. Go check them out for all your CBD oil supplements. They look after the Chinese world champions. They look after me and Rob. They look after the average Joe. They can look after you and use the code Fight Talk at the checkout. Get ten percent off. It's a winner. Uh, Rob, this week we have a pretty, pretty busy schedule. We're going to be joined fighting at UFC 216. UFC heavyweight Mark, the hand of God beer. Um, Mark's second appearance on the show. He was with us just before his last victory yes. at 209. So that's the obviously fight talk effect. Um, no, it's all the training he puts in. It's most likely yeah. zero yeah. to do we with us. We might have had, no, we don't have any. Nothing. No. Uh, so Mark will be joining us later on. And we will be joined then by um, Franz Milan. Malambo, an SPG fighter, France, the Black Mamba Mam- Malambo. Um, absolutely, if you haven't seen France in a while, it's because he hasn't fought in Ireland in a while. You might remember him from a standout victory over Darren O'Gorman at Bama 22. We spoke it with um, France. If you're looking at this, it was a little earlier because yes. it's darker now. He speaks about wanting to be relevant, wanting to be back in the game, wanting to be active. It's a great interview with the great France Malambo, a lovely guy, and his personality will literally yes. jump off the YouTube screen or the audio listening device. And then we're joined by a man that I'm sure you've seen at every show on the planet. Um, He's one of a triplet, I'm convinced. Um, KO Media... um, it's one of the busiest men in the fight game. Jerry McCarthy will be joining us to talk all things photography, how he got into it, um, and a little bit about his career and who he looks up to. Um, but yeah, this is an absolute jam-packed show. Uh, I'm going to say let's start with Mark um, God, yeah. Godbeer, but we're not because we're going all the way back. So uh, welcome to Daylight and welcome to obviously Fight Talk, Mark Godbeer. So we are now joined by UFC heavyweight fighter who fights at UFC 216. We're delighted we are now joined by Mark, the hand of God Beer. So Mark, welcome back to obviously Fight Talk, my man. How you doing, guys? You all good? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're in good form, my man. Go on, say that again, sorry. Before 209, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, it yeah, was. I think it was. Yeah, it was yeah. just before two yes. or nine. Yeah, good memory. Yeah. yeah. Um, big fight coming up but again on another big card as well. Mark taking on Walt Harris. Um, I don't know, cameras jumping in. Uh, taking on Walt Harris at uh, two sixteen going down in October. Couple of weeks out from the fight, how's camp going? Our camp's well, mate. Uh, everything's going to plan. Um, no injuries touch wood. I've sort of, you know, we're, we're just just the final preparation now. We've done all of the like, you know, the sort of hard sparring now. We got sort of a week and a half left. Um, I'm going to go up to uh, Bristol just up the road for me tomorrow just to put in my final sort of uh, boxing spa, so to speak, with a couple of pro boxers up there. Um, and then that's pretty much it for the sparring side. Um, uh, it, 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 this last couple of weeks just it's just game plans now you know going over our game plans putting everything together and and yeah I'm really happy it's uh, one of the best camps I've I, I've had I've I've stayed uh, my last camp obviously I was up in um I was up in Scotland with a Scottish hit squad um very very good very good coach Brian Gallagher very good team a uh, very good camp um Unfortunately, this time, um, I'm, I'm right on the opposite end of the spectrum to them. I'm right down the bottom of the south of England. 
And uh, obviously, because I was out injured and stuff, uh, you know, and I couldn't fight on the Glasgow card, financially, I had to sort of uh, stay back home because of financial reasons and set up camp back home. And uh, it's, it's really come together. I've sort of, when I was back home, I sort of messaged uh, sort of all the best coaches in the area and just said, look, this is the plan. Um, I want to stay home here to do my camp, but um, I can't do it. We're not so lucky down here, so to speak, like we've got, um, uh, like, like in the big cities, you've got gyms where you've got everything under one roof, you know. Uh, back home here, we, we've got very good level stuff, but um, I, I have to, I, I've had to do a bit of traveling, say like I had one gym for my Muay Thai, another gym for my wrestling, and then um, I've joined back up with uh, Alex Owen. I don't know if you remember Alex Owen from back in the day, very, very good, uh, very good. He was a very good fighter back mm. in his day as well, very good record. A very good submission wrestler, so I've joined back up with the team and just uh, putting everything back, putting everything together with Alex, and and, it, and it's really worked out really well. You know, everything's come together. I've had some good sparring, and 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 everyone's sort of uh, everyone's really um, come together for me as well. You know, everyone's sort of uh, you know they've all they've all uh, joined teams and we've all sort of out of five teams we've made sort of one team you know yeah. it's really good like everyone's been brought together and, and I've really enjoyed it I'm happy you know and I get to see my uh, kids and stuff as well which is which is a bonus so uh, that's yeah. something I noticed with you on social media as well. There was a couple of pictures on your Facebook where the kids were with you, the kids were surrounded. A lot of fighters talk about when they have their family around them, how much it can motivate them that little bit more, as in their mouths to feed and stuff like that. Would you echo that opinion? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's good. And, and, and don't get me wrong, um, obviously, I, I'm, I'm not with my, my ex-partner, the mother of my kids, but um, I, I do still, obviously, I'm still a big part of their life and that. But even even being back back home, so to speak, is um, I still don't get as much time as what I would like. So it wasn't so bad when it was a six weeks holiday because I train in the morning, and then I get a few hours off in the afternoon. I can go around and see my kids and stuff. Because but now they're back at school, it, it, it's still I still I still limited to the time I see them, but I still do see them. So I don't go eight weeks without not seeing my kids and stuff. And it really does motivate me, you know. When I have them on the weekends, I bring them with me to the gym. Um, like the, the some of the gyms I train at, like when my conditioning coach, um, he's always got his missus there, and like my coach Adam and his girlfriend Sarah. That the day, like you know, Sarah's always taking my kids off and doing stuff with them whilst I'm training and that. And 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 it is good, yeah, it is good, you know. Coming um, off, coming off. I got, right. I, Sorry, go I got three girls, so I'm not sure how that's going to pan out in the future. <laughs> oh, well, women's MMA is involving and involving, so you never know. The God Bears could be the, the, the new era fighting of uh, the fighting family. <laughs> Just bringing you back a little bit, Mark, to uh, UFC 209. After it, you, weren't, you were a little disheartened with your, your performance. Um, since then, I'm sure you've watched the fight back. Has your opinion changed of that? You were sort of annoyed at yourself almost in your interview where you felt you could have finished Spitz, but you just wanted the W because you felt, your, to use your words, your back was against the wall in that fight. Yeah, um, I said, yeah, um, do you know what? I've, no, I've, I've, yeah, I do take my words back a little bit because I, I've looked at that fight and I've taken so much positives for from it. Um, I think the two main factors from that fight, one was overloading, overloading my shots, looking for the finish mm. all the time. I said, I did actually say, you know, there's times where I could have finished him, but there was also times, looking back on it, where I was sort of trying too hard at times, like, you know, with overloading my shots. I think the commentators, uh, obviously the interviews you give are directly after the fight, so you haven't had a chance to yeah, watch the yeah. fight and stuff, so... Um, my opinion has changed slightly. Um, there was times where I was overloading too much. Um, so, so I've really worked on uh, staying loose, lots of movement, staying light on my feet, not overloading, and just and just getting my combos off and, and so forth. Um, and and another major factor was 
this camp, I'm like really working my conditioning because mm. um, uh, like I've, I've said it in an interview before, but like uh, you know, the, my nickname they call me the Hand, my friends and stuff because I'm a record. You know, there's no denying it. My record shows that I do knock people out. Um, most of my wins come from knocking people out. Mm -hmm. But these guys now in the UFC, um, they got heads like rocks. <laughs> and I'm going to hit these guys, and they're going to keep coming forward. So I need to, I need to, I need to have the conditioning now to be willing to go three rounds. And in the back of my head, I want to finish people. I am a finisher, but also I've got to be prepared for um i've got to be prepared for guys that that just take these shots and come forward mm. and get into three round wars so i did take a lot from it yeah and i'm glad i went i'm glad now looking back on it i went the three rounds it's my very first fight i went three rounds you know um and 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 i went the distance and some people say you know, I gassed a little bit and this and that. You know, it's, it's, it's a world of social media now, you know. No matter how good of a performance you you put in, you can put in, you know, the best performance ever. And there's always going to be, what do they call it, trolls, is it? Oh, there's yeah. always people trolling you oh, and yeah. uh, saying it was a bad performance and this and that. But, um, you know, my opinion is, you know... You try and carry 250 pound around for, for for like 15 solid minutes when someone's trying to take your head off. You know what I mean? I'm bound to gas a little bit, but hopefully this time I, um, I'll be more sharper, more alert, and uh, you know just just get in there and do my thing. You said after the fight that you ha you felt the nerves going into it. Is that is that something that you've worked on since? Um, with like a mind coach or or even with just any kind of coach to work on going in maybe a little bit calmer um, obviously um obviously you guys follow my social media i'm quite you know i i, I am who i am on my social media i don't <laughs> pretend to be who i am you know i don't pretend to be this you know like heroic role model or anything like that i'm just fucking me like you know but um going into this fight there was a I remember, uh, I think it was a commentary from Dominic Cruz, and he and he said something like, he doesn't believe, like, because I stated before in an interview, it might have been on your interview or something, it might have been, I'm not sure, guys, but um, Dominic Cruz stated he doesn't believe in pre-fight nerves. He just thinks mm. he's, you know, he don't see how people... And, and when I first read it, I thought, like, I was a bit pissed off, you know what I mean? I was thinking, mm. well, fucking, that's bullshit, because it's true. But then... Um, my my striking coach, um, Sonny Perez, he's my Muay Thai coach back home here. He took me around and said to me, "Do you know what you got to do, Mark? You got to go into these fights." He said, "You got to remember why you do this. You do it because you love it. You love the sport. You love the training. You 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 love everything about this. You love as much as you hate it sometimes." We do it because we love it. He said, so that's what you got to do when you go into your fight. Go in there and love it. Enjoy the experience. Love the experience. Enjoy the experience. And um, and that, just a, that simple little uh, conversation I had with him really sunk in deep. And um, and that's the mentality I'm taking into the fight. And and that's the mentality I've taken into the rest of my fight camp. And it's, and it's really... Uh, it's really paying off because I am loving it. You know, I'm loving my training. I'm loving the people around me. I can't wait to get in there and fight. Obviously, I'm nervous. I think you need to be nervous mm. because um, nerves keep you aware. It's the flight or fight mode, you know. Yeah. The, the, the nerves do keep you aware and you do need to have a, a certain a certain amount of nerves to keep you wary. If you, if you wasn't nervous at all, you would just walk in there with your hands down trying to take someone out and get knocked out you know what i mean so so um yeah my mentality is completely different i'm looking forward to it and i'm gonna go in there this time and i'm gonna enjoy my fight um all of my best performances has come when i've enjoyed the fight when i've looked at it as do you know what we do this every fucking day you know what mm. i mean sorry i mean swear then but we do this every day you know this is something we do every day day in day out there's no it's no different Mm. It's just, it's just that you know you've got TV cameras and a crowd there. You know, apart from that, this is something we do every day. So um, I'm just going to enjoy the process, and um, I'm going to prove to everyone 
that I belong in the UFC and I'm going to stay here. I, I, I truly think you're going to see the best performance of my career this next fight. I really believe that as well. Is it something as well, Mario? It's just you always hear Joe Rogan. I com- I'm convinced has this uh, phrase copyrighted. But the UFC nerves or the UFC jitters. Is that legit? Because I've seen you fight on the BAM as big a stage. You fought on Bellator. It, it was something that you addressed as well. Does the three letters UFC just bring added pressure to each fight? Um, yes, it does. It does. A hundred percent it does. Because um, it's the biggest stage in the world. Yeah. But also, um, with, with that... Um, it does what what I what the, where I'm at now with, with with all of the UFC jitters, so to speak, is it can get in your head. It can give you the jitters, but if you allow it to, yeah. I've cut, I've got to the point now where I'm not allowing it to get to yeah. me. Like I just said to you, then it's something we do every single yeah. day. I train every day. I spar against. You know some of the top guys in the UK. I spar against the top boxers in the UK, the top kickboxers. I'm grappling with some of the best guys in the UK. I do this every day. So um, it is, you know, if I allow the UFC jitter thing to come into play, it will. But I'm not going to, you know. That's that's my views on it now, and I've sort of had to set my mindset mm-hmm. like that because in the past I have let it get to me. And and I and, and and I see what Dominic Cruz was saying now when he says he doesn't believe in it because you have to have that mindset. Mm. You have to have the mindset of um, there's no such thing, you know, as as the jitters. You know, there ain't no jitters. What jitters? This is what we do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like so. So that's the type of I do see what he was saying, and um, and this is what I'm taking on board. Um, and and it's so funny as well, just like. All of this has come off the back of just a simple conversation yeah. with my striking coach mm-hmm. about just mate, you do this every single day. What, what, why are you? What, what's there to be scared of? Mm. You know what I mean? Just go in there and enjoy the process. Enjoy it. This is what we train for. This is what we do. You know, go in there. Don't, don't make it a nightmare. We don't train for nightmares. We train because we love it and enjoy it. So take that into the fight with you and that's what I'm going to do you know you're living your dream essentially Mark you know what I mean you're stepping out to do something that you love and, and as you said it's, it's, this is your dream you know you, but I'm right in saying before this you were, you were a plasterer do you know what I mean? And now, rather, you're, you're, rather than plastering a wall you're, you're plastering someone to the canvas <laughs> and beating the brakes off them so it's the dream yeah. isn't it? yeah it is, and, it, and it is my dream as well and uh, and it, yeah it and that's, yeah, that's another factor of it. You know, I'm doing something I love as a job. Mm. This is my full-time job now. I'm, and I, I, every single day I wake up, don't get me wrong, I wake up some days and I think, God, I can't get out of bed. I'm aching so much. But do you know what I mean? I love it. I, this is my job. This is my life. I've worked nearly 10 years to get to this stage of my career. And, and my dream was to get to the UFC and, and I'm living my dream, you know. I am actually living my dream. And there's not many people that can get up mm. every single day of their life and say, do you know what? I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I love and I'm getting paid for it, you know. And, 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 and I've set up, you know, I've got, I've sort of set a five-year plan in my head and stuff, you know. After my fighting, I want to open up my own gym and stuff like this. So, so everything's all coming together now, you know. Everything's coming together my head's in a good place. I'm living my dream, and um, I, 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 my mindset now is, you know, this is just the beginning. Of, I think this is definitely just the beginning. I think that out of all the divisions also to be in in the UFC, I really do think the uh, the heavyweight division is the most open division to yeah. make a name for yourself, especially yeah. at the moment. All of the Old, I say older fighters, they're the same age as me. I just started later on in my yeah. career. But all of the fighters have been around a lot longer. They're all sort of dropping off now. That you know, they're they're either really they're, they're either riddled with injuries and dropping off the scene. Um, they're they're either being popped by mm-hmm. you know yeah. everyone's favorite friends. Yeah, you uh, said it. Uh, you know, they're, 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 there's 
but then you've got new fresh blood coming in, you know, like mm. Nuganu and, 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 you know, and, but realistically, the, the, for a long time, the sort of top five has just been battling it out with yeah. each other, back yeah. and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But that, that now there's fresh blood coming through and I, and I see, I just see it being wide open and there's no reason with the right mindset and the right coaching and um, a little bit of luck, there's always a little bit of luck involved, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, that I, there's no that there's no reason why I can't live my dream to the full potential and mix it with these guys, you know? You fight Walt Harris. Um, what do you think of, of Harris as a fighter? Have you watched much tape on him? And with a win over Harris, where does that put you in the division? Because as you said, it's a really, really open division, the heavyweight division. Yeah, I think... Um, well, I'm not sure you have to correct me. I'm not sure if he's in top 15. Or, I know he's definitely top 20. Um, he'll maybe check I'll probably wrong now. He'll probably prove me wrong. But, he has a Google uh, machine there. He'll check it. Not ranked according on, on there. They only do the top 10. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, according, yeah I, according to I, Tapology, I, he's 33rd in the world. 33. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that uh, Fight Matrix ranking, is it's, it? It's uh, Tapology. Tapology, so pinch of salt. Tapology, yeah. So, but, you know, um, there's lots of different rankings and this and that, but I think yeah. UFC sort of rankings, he's he, he's top top yeah. 20, I would yeah. say. So And it puts me right up there. Um, I think the matchmaker's done uh, a good job on this fight. You know, he's, well, Harris has is, is got 10 finishes, 10 knockouts. Yeah. I've got, um, I have to think now, uh, 12 finishes. Yeah nine knockouts so you know we're going like 10 knockouts versus nine knockouts um we're both bangers there's no denying that we're both bangers um the, 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 i i respect well i think he's he's a very powerful one of the most athletic heavyweights in the division which is hence why i've really worked my uh conditioning because i know i'm in for a, you know a, a, a mm. fast-paced fight with this guy I respect him, but also um, I see a lot of holes in his game. I really do, and, and likewise with him, he probably sees a lot of holes in my game. But I can I can assure you one thing that the fighter you've seen on 209 won't be the fighter you see on 216. And 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 I, and I see, I, I see, I visualise what what's going to happen in this fight, and I'm not going to lose it. That's something like two sixteen, Mark. It it's stacked there. You've got Verdum and uh, Derek Lewis as well on the card. So you're all, you're in, you're on the same card as, as big named heavyweights as well. Like realistically, looking forward to. You said you have a five year plan. If you were in Joe Shelley's shoes, who would you like? Who would your dream matchup be in the UFC heavyweight division? Who would your okay, if you could so, have one? Um, I think um, I I don't genuinely like to look past mm. the guy that I've got in front of me. And, and I, I genuinely don't. But, um, they're, they're, so, so realistically, I, I wanna, I, I'm gonna throw out there the two guys. I wanna, I wanna get Walt Harris out the way. Um, if I take out Walt Harris, I want Todd Duffy. Mm. Todd Duffy has yeah. made it clear that he's gonna be fit, sort of, um, the end by the end by December he's going to be fit and ready to fight again. Um, he's made it clear that he wants a piece of the Brit, i.e. me. Mm-hmm. Um, we were supposed to meet at two hundred nine, and he, um, you know, nothing was really disclosed of what happened. But I think I do believe, you know, um, genuinely, um, he had a shoulder injury and surgery and that. But I think he's, you know, he's had a rocky path, mm. especially with Usada and that. I bet he's suffering with a bit of a, you know, a post-Usada blues, you know. So, uh, you know, um, I, like I said, I'm not looking past Walt. Yeah. There's no dis- disrespect to Walt because I'm not looking past yeah, him. But realistically, the vision I see is taking out Walt. And then if Todd Duffy wants to go, I am 100% ready to go with Todd Duffy so nice. that's that's as far forward as I'm thinking yeah no that's a respect though just before we let you go as well uh, 
quickly get your thoughts on uh, Stipe Miocic. He has his eyes on another Brit, but it's not in MMA. Uh, Stipe Miocic, what's your thoughts on him calling out Anthony Joshua? Is that a fight that you think could happen? I just think, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, is this, so we're going back to the old MMA boxing debate yeah, again. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I honestly, I mix up, I, I mix it up a lot with a lot of boxers. I, I'm always sparring a lot of top 10 heavyweight UK boxers. So mm. I do hang with, you know, top 10 heavyweight boxers and stuff like that all the time and that. But it, it's, it's, it's two different sports. Mm. It really is, you know. Um, like these the boxers have spent their whole life doing one thing, boxing. Mm. We've spent our life doing, you know, apart from the few that's transitioned over and that, but most of us have spent our life going from um, boxing to MMA. Um, you know, no, sorry, sorry, just... Um, doing MMA yeah. so I stumbled a bit with my words there so I, I just think you know in a boxing match t t t it's, it's a no brainer yeah. you know but in an MMA match can you see any of these boxers no. taking out top guys in a cage Not a hope. Can, can you see can you see uh Floyd Mayweather taking out Conor McGregor in a cage. Can you heck really let's be realistic you're not going to mm. but and, and it goes for the same when us guys step into a boxing ring, but the only difference is with a boxing ring, it, well, it's, it's still a combat sport. It, for, for, for both sports, everyone's got a puncher's chance. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope I didn't stumble too much on that one. Um, <laughs> that's my views on it, you know. But no, I, think, you know, I, I think that's a shared sport. view. Yeah. Yeah. Two different sports. And, um, mm -hmm. I, and, and I do generally love them both, you know. Yeah. So maybe... You know, when, when when my MMA career is over, I wouldn't mind putting my hands to a bit of boxing as well. I did, so. I did see a white collar video of you online, uh, doing a little bit of white yeah, collar that boxing. Yeah, that wasn't the best one. Don't show it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when do you when do you head to Vegas, best, Mark? I think it was back. You can show it if you like. But it, it was back in. Um, uh, it was. I was. I had a bit of a long layoff, and then yeah. there was. Uh, we were sorting out contracts between one promotion and another promotion. And I thought to myself, do you know what? Um, I want to stay active. Mm. So there was a local show to me. There was a half decent guy. Um, I'm, 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 I'm pretty good. I say pretty good friends, but you know we're on talking terms and stuff. Roma Vello the silver he's an experienced stand-up mm. guy um and, and and we just said do you, do you want to do a fight you know i want to mm. stay active and i thought yeah why not so i jumped in and, and you know put my hands to boxing yeah I've, I've, I've had a couple of boxing fights in the past so it's something I, I i would i would maybe look at doing before i finally hang up my gloves and um, when are you heading out to vegas uh, for the fight when are you going to get acclimated um i'm gonna uh, last last time um, we were lucky enough to get um, decent sponsors and stuff that paid for us to go out early mm. and stuff like this. But like I said, uh, financially this time we've had to sort of budget budget a little bit. So um, we will be flying out. I think it's the Tuesday before. But mm. but what we plan on doing, I spoke to my coaches and stuff. Is I believe they're eight hours behind. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, come in and train sort of two, three o'clock in the morning, yeah. sort of like as some next week, start training at those times, yeah. just so when I do get there, it isn't a shock to the system yeah. and, and I'll be ready and, and you know, I haven't, I haven't got to deal with the jet lag and stuff like that, so... Um, I know you're sitting in the car outside the gym waiting to go in so we appreciate your time we won't hold you up yes. anymore um, I cannot wait yeah. to watch you fight I've seen you fight live um, a couple of occasions I absolutely love it you always bring it you put on a great show and um, I look forward to watching you in a couple of weeks my man and best of luck yeah cheers man thank you and thanks for the interview again as well guys I enjoyed doing it you guys cheers, cheers you're an Mark. absolute star see you later cheers, Mark take care cheers, Mark. take cheers. care they are, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mark, hand of God, God beer. Um, 
Yeah, if you've seen Mark before, like I, I was lucky enough as in Birmingham to watch Mark fight in that champion versus champion um, show, uh, where he was fighting somebody he knew and trained with uh, previously, uh, Stuart Austin. Yeah, and it, he's absolute Mark can't bang. <laughs> um, yeah. let, just let him bang, bro. Just let, but just let him um, bang, bro. yeah, was, again, great getting the time. He's I literally as we were talking to him earlier, he said I'm training at six, but the coach probably won't mind if we go a little after. So I'm looking at the clock here as we're recording. It's now quarter past six. Yeah, and I'm going to get him out of the car and in there, yeah. or he'll get. In trouble, but uh, big shout out and thank you to uh, Mark Godbeer and check out. I'm sure you will. UFC yeah, 216, of course, yeah. you'll be watching. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Mark Godbeer. Welcome along to obviously Fight Talk Facebook Live. Welcome. Look at that. It's like inception Welcome. up there. Um, this is a little bit we're just doing this each week just to give it a little test just to see um, if the equipment is working for obviously Fight Talk Facebook Live so this one is what we're going to do is an, uh, the Reddit MMA page or MMA Reddit depending what way you like to go um, myself a name on Reddit is Embrace the Madness and the E in the Madness is a three um, and so we basically posted a, a, a post today this day seven years ago mark hunt made his ufc debut and lost to sean mccorkle in via straight armbar for his sixth loss in a row and um, so after this and less than four years later he competed for the ufc interim heavyweight title going five one and one in his next seven fights this has to be seen as one of the best career turnarounds in mma ufc history it's up there alongside with robbie Lawler, in my opinion, what other career turnabouts can you think of? So this was um, something we shared to see would we get any interaction, and of course on Reddit you always do. So a big shout out from Blast Misks, that's what I'm calling them today, War Yamasaki. Uh, RDA started badly and to be honest kept himself right there above average for quite a while. Then he flipped the switch and went 9-1 and one in almost 5 years. So RDA, good shout Rob? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, yeah, look, he's it was a weird one with RDA because when he came into the UFC, he was kind of, you can't call him a gatekeeper because he, he, he came in, he got a couple of wins, a couple of losses, but he wasn't, he didn't look like a guy who was an amazing prospect. Like, mm. I don't think anybody was talking about RDA being an amazing prospect. And it wasn't until after the Jim Miller fight, maybe, that we start seeing what RDA could really do. Mm. Um, and he made a serious comeback in his career and maybe he's going to be on another one now when you think about it. You know, he, he, he lost and, you know, I think a lot of people stopped talking about him and mm. I think after his last couple of wins now at um, uh, Welterweight I think maybe he could be on another resurgence maybe we'll see we'll see how it goes but um, it's a good show I like that one yeah uh, Mark Hunt we have to talk a little bit about yeah, Mark Hunt, Hunt. yeah Mark Hunt because for a long the time the quintessential one isn't he Mark Hunt was almost a throwback to the old school striker versus grappler it was like you're fighting Mark Hunt you know you just take him down right and beat him yeah. up like and you know he, he, he'll, he'll go but um he changed and he changed radically as well. Like to the the victories that Mark Hunt and devastating victories as yeah. well. Walk off KOs, beautiful walk off KOs. And Robert, we have been in fairness on Reddit. We have been the absolute um, historians. Yeah. But now Mark Hunt again, he's he's now given out that you know he's obviously fighting. Um, Let's say people who are on more juice than Tropicana, I think is the way Chael yeah, Sonnen yeah. said it. Uh, but yeah, Mark Hunt, big resurgence, big knockouts. But you could argue he's on the downhill spiral Down again. Down now, but you know, at that time, it was a, a serious resurgence by Mark Hunt. Um, notable wins in the resurgence as well by the beautiful help of uh, thing like the big wins really it Chris started Torshner. Chris Torshner that was the big start <laughs> then Ben Rothwell Czech Congo Stefan Struve Jeez, every time he hit Stefan Struve Stefan Struve was like a bubble man that was for the longest time um, that Stefan Struve I think I guess it was Esther Lynn who took the photo um, where he caught um, I think it was an overhand right or was it a left hook or something but he caught Stefan Struve anyway and mm. there was the blood Coming. It looked like something out of a video game. I'm, I'm yeah. you're sure you've seen the picture, but Steph, that was Steph, uh, Steph is, Yeah, that was lip. my wallpaper yeah, for the longest really time. Big, yeah. yeah, big, 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 big lip. Yeah. But again, now, um, you know, in fairness, Hunt, he's um, he's had a he had a, a bad run, and then he's he's he was a mix and match. But at the start, 100. Yeah. It who else, looked like who else are people. Uh, um, chaser, other ones. Where Robbie Lawler? A couple of people have said Robbie Lawler again. Robbie Lawler was one who went away from the UFC, came back into the UFC, and then holy. What, what happened? What happened to yeah. Robbie Lawler? He went on an absolute yeah. tear, uh, becoming the champion. Yeah, I think I'm nearly sure he said in an interview that that at Strike Force he just he wasn't that motivated. Mm. Um, and I'm sure he he loves fighting in Strike Force, but maybe he just felt that 
Um, they just didn't feel the the fire. But when you got back to the UFC, when when the UFC finally well, they purchased Strike Force and then they uh, took their fighters over. Maybe he just felt okay. This is when I'm going to go on another run because mm. he he knows like if I go on a run here, if I become the champion here, I'm going to make a hell of a lot of money. So that run that he done in the UFC was insane. Like I remember it was on a run the Rousey card because I remember mm. going home when he was making his his UFC re debut or his return to the UFC um, against Josh Koscheck. Mm. I just thought Josh Koscheck, you know, all day, every day, he's going to take him down, going to beat him up, and then he knocks him out, and he goes on that, that crazy run. And then how many wars has he been in in the yeah. UFC since he came back? Yeah. It's crazy. Like, it's absolutely crazy. Um, he went on a serious run. A big shout-out, notable one for me, was uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson. He was, oh, yeah. He sort of, he was cut because he couldn't cut. Essentially, yeah. he, he was middleweight, welterweight, couldn't make way, got cut, went off, absolutely destroyed the world, and came back at light heavyweight, and uh, looked the absolute destroyer, knocking people out for fun. Probably the scariest DC. light heavyweight. And that's DT403 on Reddit, called that one out. And yeah, again, Anthony Johnson, for a long time, people thought, this is the guy that's going to dethrone uh, John Jones. John Jones... Um, you know, you went a little rogue, yeah. you could say. Um, yeah. A little rogue. rogue. Knocked down a pregnant woman. A bit of coke. Yeah. Um, took a lot of steroids. Um, no, it's allegedly. been... No, it's not allegedly. Well, now it was peace sample came back. Yeah, that, does, um, that doesn't change anything. Yeah, else. allegedly. allegedly. Uh, uh, but fortunately, it, well, not unfortunately, I, I DC like beat yeah. him. That was the thing. A lot yeah. of people, I think, thought... Like, when Andy Rumble Johnson landed the big shot on Daniel Cormier... Shows how good he it is. It looked like, holy shit, Cormier's out. But no... Uh, so, the rumble, yeah, yeah the, the rumble, rumble one's a good one. shout, but it's it's a weird one because I don't think like he he kind of he lost a couple in the UFC, got cut, mm. and then when he was outside the UFC, he, that's when he became the destroyer. Like he didn't really do poorly outside the UFC, yeah. but I think it was kind of it was the well, the, it was the build up back to it. Like it was, yeah, you know, it's, it's a shame he's not around now because I think the light heavyweight division could deal with it in Anthony Rumble Johnson. V Ram nineteen seventy four, I think, gets the shout out for this. One of the best is Matt Brown. Oh yeah, uh, Matt Brown was twelve oh, and eleven yeah. after getting subbed in UFC one thirty nine, and honestly looked like a uh, uh, tough can at that point. All right, uh, tough candidate. Obviously, suddenly he wins seven in a row, six with KOs. Uh, only the elite at one seventy stopped his run, and even Lawler and Hendricks couldn't finish him. Yeah. Uh, one and five recently though, but yeah, Matt Brown had some turnaround. Yeah, and I remember actually that night as well when that started because he fought Stephen Thompson, and Stephen Thompson had his UFC de- debut. Mm. Got that incredible head kick KO. And then he was going in against Matt Brown, who everyone kind of thought, okay, Matt Brown's a bit of a lamb to the slaughter here. He's getting put in here to, to build up the new guy, build up the young guy. And he went there and he put a beating on, on Stephen Thompson. It was it was something that really changed Stephen Thompson's game, I thought. I thought mm. Matt Brown kind of showed him a lot in MMA that he's never seen. And and since then, he's got a lot better. But that's that's where it started. And then he came back. And, you know, at one point, Matt Brown was probably top six in the division, which is crazy to think. Mm especially with the career that he's had previously before that. Like, you look at his record, you're not thinking he's an elite fighter, but he's an elite fighter. He's, he's, he's For the longest time, he's just been fighting everybody. Eve left 23 gives a bit of a shout. He's also retiring, by the way. Oh, he is retiring, yeah. yeah um, happy retirement. Eve left 23 um, gives a shout out to Orlovsky. Yeah, uh, he slumped yeah. started with Fedor. Yeah. Um, how did slump start with Fedor? He was because remember he left the UFC and then he went to that was affliction, wasn't it? If that was affliction, yeah. He and then spoiled into embarrassing losses and losses, and then he came back and he went on an absolute tear back in um, the UFC. Yeah, did he challenge for the title? Arlovsky, yeah, Arlovsky was a champion at one stage yeah. in the UFC. No, no, I mean... Second time s- round. No, yeah, since, no, I don't think so. I don't think so, I'm no. not sure. But he got close. Do you know who was a shout-out? And it wasn't a shout-out to um, dip in form. It was more injury. Frank Mir. Frank Mir was in... He yeah, became, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. became the UFC yeah. heavyweight champion of the world. Bruce Buffer called him Frank Moore. Yeah, um, Frank Moore. He, Frank, called him, he called himself Frank Moore yeah, as well. Frank point, Moore! Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and Bruce actually said that was one he always wanted to get back Yeah. Um, and then when Frank Mir uh, beat was it no, did he beat Noguera for the interim title? Um, he then, who did he beat for the interim, interim title he beat I can't, I can't remember who he beat anyway, might have been. We, could, we could Google we, that we'll I'm roll sure. back that um, but yeah and Bruce Buffer got him. but yeah he came back from a serious car accident and it yeah. looked like he was never going to fight again um, never mind get to that level he made his return against Brock Lesnar uh, no yeah was Wasn't first it? fight? No, I don't think. No, it's, no, it's no. Retor- it's for- I'm pretty sure his first fight back was Brock Lesnar. We have made an absolute mess of this. Yeah, thing. maybe not. Um, um, no, another sure. another shout out that, that I seen on Reddit earlier was uh, Dominic Cruz. 
Dom, because again, injury. Yeah. More injury yeah. than and yeah, like, yeah. He's Tito pro- Ortiz, sure, he hurt his neck every time. He, he breaks his neck bed. every every second day. Yeah, but who, if we're missing anyone, um, comment, say who we're missing. Um, yeah. We're only doing this again just to test Facebook Live. This will also be on the full show, though, so yeah, don't confuse people. This is on, the full, this is on yeah. the full show and Facebook. So comment, the full show will be out tomorrow. It's worth watching. We're joined by UFC heavyweight uh, Mark Hand of God Beer. And we're going to end this because we've got to dial up SBG fighter Franz Malambo, who's going to be taking a call by us on Skype now. So check it out. Um, it's not tomorrow but again we're only testing we're also going to be joined um, by somebody who's not a fighter he's not a coach but he's at every fight show you'll ever watch <laughs> um, be it if you're watching recently he was at Cage Warriors he was at Bama he's the UFC everywhere you look this man is here Jerry McCarthy the photographer is going to be joining us in studio as well today yes. but uh, we have to end this little test period here again just to get a Franz Malambo on the phone. So make sure to like, subscribe to obviously Fight Talk um, and check out the full episode available tomorrow. Facebook, you're beautiful. So welcome back to obviously Fight Talk. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see. And if you're listening on audio, you're about to find out. We are joined by the Black Mamba Franz Malambo. So Franz, thanks a million, my man, for taking the time to come on to obviously Fight Talk. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, thanks for uh, inviting me on here. It's uh, uh, th- th- this. This is big time stuff. I appreciate you guys inviting me on here. Big time stuff. Big already time stuff. favorite already. guest. Already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back anytime. <laughs> um, Franz, I know from being in the Irish MMA circuit and watching fights and announcing at shows, your name, true amateur was a name whispered with fear as well by a lot of people because just how good you were. Um, you went on to win the IMAFs in 2015 um, and you turned pro and your first pro fight was in the three arena. So uh-huh. I just want to bring it to just, just to that point and then we can go back a little bit as well. How was that for you making your pro debut in the three arena, the Point Depot? Oh, it was it was unbelievable. Like you know what I mean. Like there was that that fight was was properly hyped up. Um, like it, it was I, I I was nervous going into that fight. Do you know what I mean? Because I was finally going pro. Uh, the guy I was fighting, Darren Gorman. Mm-hmm. Everybody was was talking big things about this guy. You know what I mean? He, he at the time he was three and all. This was my debut, and uh, he was more of a ground specialist. You know what I mean? And that's usually where I get my problems from. Mm people that, that 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 love the ground and it, it i basically knew his game from the start you know well i thought i did do you know what i mean basically take me down and then try to keep me down do you know what i mean which yeah. is what uh most people uh, i i fight try to do you know what i mean so that that was that, that was, it was exciting just being on bama as well and uh get getting this fight so the whole the whole thing was was a proper honor you know what i mean and uh I, I I was already fit, you know what I mean, at the time because I, I just came back from Vegas and whatnot, and from doing the the IMMAFs, and uh, so I, I felt I felt I felt confident and I felt uh, ready to go, you know what I mean? Because I feel once I'm fit, like once I'm like as fit as I was at that time, I, I feel pretty unbeatable, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you're training and stuff for fights, you are. You know, you're trying to get ready. You're trying to do certain things, but you know, you need you need to be living as well. Like mm-hmm. there's bills needs to be paid. There's other things in the background that a fighter needs to deal with, and so you're not as you're not always as in, in a good shape as you'd like to be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But this time, I had all I, I I had all that in the back. You know what I mean? I had I, I had. I had all my training done. I was in perfect condition. So I, I was really excited for that fight and it, it worked It worked out really good for me. And to almost reel it in just a little bit with that fight, how vital in preparation was the IMF? So like you went, you represented Ireland and you won for Ireland. So how much did that lead you in? Was that like the best possible setup before turning pro? 100%. That was my plan. Because... Uh, I was I was actually talking to one of the guys and I was like I, I don't know how 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 do you go pro in MMA like mm-hmm. I mean how does the the whole process even start? Uh, Tommy Martin I think it actually was and he was like yeah, I want ten amateur fights and then I'm gonna go pro or I I don't know I, I think that's how the conversation went and anyway mm-hmm. so I always had it in my head once I get ten fights 
I'm gonna go pro. That's mm. that's what that was my thinking at the start of my career, and then obviously I was assuming I'd get ten and all. You know what mm. I mean? <laughs> and then I ended up being two, uh, getting two losses. Uh, but then at the end, I, I finished at uh, thirteen, thir- thirteen and and two, uh, finishing up with the IMMFs. So I definitely had to do something like that to 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 move on onto the, to move on to the pros because I started pretty late, you know what I mean. So I had to um, finish my amateur career, uh, make making a statement, and I think that 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 was the best statement I could have made at the time. But then. You left Ireland. You were gone. We didn't. We, we haven't seen you back. You yeah. put on such a display. Yeah. You had like I was. I was sat cage side. Your your fight was the first fight at Bama uh, twenty two that I didn't call. I was the MC for um, the first couple of fights, and yours was the first fight I didn't call. It's not good enough. So yeah. no, I, wa- I wasn't good enough for you. <laughs> I believe you put that request in actually, but. Um, no, it's it's so I got to watch that case side and I remember the build up to that fight yourself and O'Garman. I was like, Why did I have to put these two hot prospects against one another yeah, so early yeah. in their careers? And then you put on such an amazing display against Darren O'Garman that I was shocked that you weren't on the next Bama and then yeah, yeah. we all know that Bama have been here, uh, KSW are coming here, Cage Warriors <laughs> but you've gone a different route. Yeah. How did this come about? Was this something that you wanted to do and test yourself uh, around the world? No, well, it's something that just happened because um, Brave, how Brave came about was the KHK thing. You know about KHK, do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so KHK basically at their inception snap, snapped me up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so uh, as soon as, like, they see me at the IMMF, so they, they caught me before I even had my amateur thing, my, 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 pro, my professional debut announced or anything, so I was already with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So... Basically, what Brave was, I mean, what KHK was, is uh, these guys in Bahrain decided to, like, this, I'm talking about, like, the the, the, the Sheik of Bahrain, one yeah, of the Sheiks yeah. of Bahrain, loved MMA, so he decided, I'm going to make a team of guys, and I'm going to build them up and make them uh, just lethal, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So he just had, like, he just wanted a, a small group of mercenaries <laughs> under him and just, you know what I mean, train them. Uh, finance them and then just send them out to just destroy you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was one of them guys he snapped me up with, uh, at the uh, at the world championships right so I was I was on that right and it was great so it was it was on a salary basis so you, you know what I mean monthly yeah. you, you, yeah, you get a wage and then every time you fight you get a bonus which was great I haven't I, I don't know much about global MMA but I haven't heard anything like that happen. No, no. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a team of guys. They're getting paid. And basically, all I was doing was representing KHK. Mm. And I was living in Ireland, but getting paid from them. Just doing exactly what I've been doing before. You mm. know what I mean? So it was absolutely great. And it helped me. It, 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 really, it really helped me at the start. You know what I mean? But that finished. You know what I mean? And the reason that finished was uh, them, got, them KHK guys decided to... Uh, Start a promotion, which turned into Brave. Mm, yeah, yeah? That makes sense. You're following me. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. Makes we were there cool. actually at the the Brave. Was yeah, the Brave, Brave yeah. Yeah, thing over here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We, oh yeah. We had right. a Roman oh, reporter yeah. that day, Carl Doran. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. You should have said hey. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so you know, once they started the promotion, they were like, right, there's no need for this team. So that went. But since the KHK thing went, nobody else was calling. So I went, I went along with Brave and I signed on with them guys. But um, the problem is with that, they, get, they only gave me a three-fight contract. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll knock that out in no time. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And Because uh, I, I like fighting consistently. So I thought them three fights would be done in literally no time. And we're like a year and a bit more now mm. after this Brave thing is, uh, is started. And I, I haven't gotten in as many fights as, as I... Uh, as I'd hoped, you know what I mean? Because I like being consistent in things. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I like fighting consistently. And uh, since I've turned pro, like I haven't been fighting as, as much as I would. And um, 
I kind of lost my train of thought there. Am I, am I, am I <laughs> going along good here? <laughs> um, you, so what you're saying, your last fight was on the 31st of March uh, this year. Yeah. So within saying that, you're looking at almost six months now. So when is, the, when is do you have news that you make? Because I know it's not, there's no public announcement of a fight coming up, but is there something in the pipeline? I'm looking at November. You know what I mean? I'm looking at November. That's what I'm saying. Even six months, like for me to not fight in six months, that's just, mm. that's just crazy. Yeah. And especially that uh, at my last fight, I was like, guys, you need to get me in quickly if you're going to want me to perform. Because I, I felt like my last performance was absolutely terrible. Mm. I won the fight and all. I got away with getting some weird submission. But I didn't feel like I, I, I performed as I would usually perform. Like... Because when I'm consistent, when I when I'm training and I have something to look forward to, that, that that's when I get in the cage and I perform at my best. You know what I mean? Like looking at my amateur career and uh, like the fights where I had, when when they were close, like that that's when I perform good. When I, if if I have a reason to stay in the gym and I I know I have something coming up, that's when I train the best. That's when that's just when that's just how I perform the best. You know what I mean? And uh, so this this long gaps in between fights is is just kind of killing me, and that's that that that's how I think I am. Where I'm I'm three I'm three and two now at my at the start of my uh, professional career, and it it just doesn't seem right. Like I, I left uh, I left the amateur scene with a good name behind me, and I I think all these kind of pullbacks kind of just uh, took me back a bit. You know what I mean? My name is fading away. Which is not a good thing at the start of my professional career, you know what I mean? But I would I would have been thinking that I would have had at least seven, eight fights at mm. this stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to start doing. Uh, I'm gonna knock this fight out in November. Uh, if that if that all goes mm. well and happens, I'm gonna knock this fight out, and I, and I, and I just want to keep fighting. And is that is that something then? Are, are, are you tied then? You were, you were saying it was a three fight contract. Is that you out of that contract? Would you like, like we were saying out at the top, you Bellator, like you look at your teammates fighting on Bellator, Bama, yeah. KSW, you know what I mean? There's so many shows back here. Is that mm. something that you want to do? You want to get on these? I won't make your name a, a promotion, but any of the promotions here, is that something you want to get back here? And you're saying your name's fade, and I certainly don't think that because when Rob said we Franz Malamo, I was like, holy shit, great. Like, yeah. I, I, was, I was like, your Franz Malamo's legit. Um, so is that something you want to do here? Is remind the people that your name may, might have faded to them? Do you want to remind them, look, I'm here. Don't forget about me. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, but See, I love fighting in Ireland. You know mm. what I mean? The whole, like, I, I fought. I, like, I fought in my places. Like, I fought in, like, China. I fought, <laughs> fought in the Middle East. I fought in... I fought in places, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's just something about fighting in Dublin that just... It, it's just different. You know what I'm saying? I, I love fighting here. And... Uh, I was getting a good crowd going mm. before I moved on. You know what I mean? I haven't fought home in a while, but as soon as I get the opportunity to fight in Ireland, I, I definitely will. And uh, you know, I've been ha- I've been having talks with Bama, and uh, they like me on there. Like, but it just it just hasn't happened. Anytime they have something going on, Brave has something going on, and I kind of committed to Brave super quick. You know what I mean? So I kind of have to stick with them for now, which they've 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 helped me a lot. Like brave but uh this 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 gap thing in between fights is no good but uh, as soon as i get a chance any type of opportunity to fight at home i definitely will take it is there any reason uh why you didn't get offered fights is it just you know not enough cards the timing wasn't right or or what reason was it that's exactly what it is no it's just um the see they they have a lot of fights at once you know what i mean in one space of time and then they don't have fights for a few months yeah that that just because it's a new promotion you see yeah. and they're they're, sure. they're 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 doing it big for such a new promotion yeah. so obviously you know what i mean they can't keep knocking out fights the whole the, the whole year which I, it is something i understand like but uh i think part of it is my is my fault as well because i just assumed that uh my contract was just you know yeah. i have to stick with them and i can't fight for anybody else but yeah. At the time, I thought as well they'd give me more fights. Yeah. Um, but a few of the a few of the other guys is on is on Brave, and they have the same contract mm-hmm. as I have. But a few of them has fought on like Bama and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's kind of my own negligence, if you want to call it. 
to not look into these things. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I just kind of sat back and be like, they know I want fights, they'll give me fights. And then time just went on and other things keep happening in between. And th that's where we are right now. But, you know, Brave is being good to me. And, uh, but I definitely want to fight at home. And now, actually, I'll talk about this later. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, two things I want to say as well. Um, similar, we had, a, we had a guest on not too long ago. Similar to, to yourself, different promotions. But Danny Henry, who um, fights out of Scotland, EFC, yeah. he was the EFC champion. And he, I, I remember when we were talking to Danny, he was like, I just don't seem to get attention at home. You know, yeah. fighting over in Africa, he's big. Yeah, people know his name there. there he's, yeah. he's a household name over there. But he wasn't, get, he wasn't getting the light shine here. Now, Light at the end of the tunnel is he just fought at UFC Scotland and won, and he's he's now in the UFC. Um, you know he's a UFC fighter, yeah. so there's definitely the paths to it there. So like it's it's one thing that I know as well. Your, your coach uh, John Kavanagh in lead up said you're already at UFC level. He said yeah. like if you were to fight the guys in the UFC in the the rank twenties in there, you, you're gonna beat them. You're at UFC level, so it's just yeah. to me it almost sounds like your frustration with not fighting. I just think it's a matter of time that when you get the fights, that light will shine on you. If you know what I mean? Ah, definitely. I guess. See, but that's what I felt, and that's that's why I get so frustrated. You know what I mean? But at the same time, um, you know what I mean. I know what I'm doing wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm not, I'm not really too much of a social media guy. Like mm -hmm. I just said, I'm, this is my first Skype. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not really good at posts and stuff on Facebook. I, mm -hmm. You know, Raz, one of my friends, yeah. always, always calls it, always calls it staying relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not super good at staying relevant. All I know, I know, all I know how to do is and fight is fight. You know what I mean? And so I'm not fighting. I'm not staying relevant. To, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I know. That part was my fault, and that that's something I'm trying to fix. But about the UFC thing, um, see, I, I just wanted to go in there and just take everything over. I, I wanted to shorten my career as much as possible, so mm. get in as much as possible, do big things, and let it go. But I'm, I'm talking to a few people, like, I've, se I, I've seen a few things. Like, I've been around the game a bit now at, the, at this stage, so I know what to what to do and what I see I, I've gotten a bit of experience do you get what I'm saying so um I'm not gonna rush into the UFC people, yeah. a lot of people have said that to me oh yeah. you're looking for the UFC I'm not gonna rush into it I'm looking to do something say say if I if I if I get something like a, a brave title or whatever yeah. other orga bigger organization then that's when I feel like I can move on yeah. to that stage you know what I'm saying but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't just get just just dive in with the Sharks just because, you know what I mean, my name is Franz Malambo and mm. I've been in Ireland for a bit. <laughs> I, I've won the amateur title and I'm going to go into the UFC. That, that's not smart. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm looking to strategize my career. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I, I, have a, I have a good team of guys behind me now. There, there's a few guys... Uh, working with my social media like oh, I'm talking to you guys now mm. and I, I basically didn't do too much to, to get there you know what I mean I have a, goo, a good group of guys behind me that's yeah. doing all these things with me I, I was talking you, you were saying about that guy was in uh, the EFC yeah 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 see I was already talking to a uh, uh, to 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 Al's podcast in, in in South Africa so I've been I've already been talking to guys in South Africa been been, been branching out because I've been in Ireland 15 years, haven't been in South Africa, and I, I like getting attention from South Africa, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm in contact with all these guys. Uh, hopefully there'll be talks about the EFC or whatever, but mm. just because I want to get as close as possible to home, you know mm. what I mean? And uh, so, so, so that's the thing. Hopefully I hear something from the EFC because Irish guy training with all these big guys and I'm South African. I'm pretty sure they'll be interested in that. But... Whatever happens, happens. You well, know what I mean? Like, I, I have a plan, set a motion, and uh, 
whatever takes me there takes me there one of your, one of your uh, teammates um, actually put an end to a former EFC champions um, fight at, at the last Bama was Henry Felipe was the champion in EFC he was brought yeah. over and they really played the Irish car with Henry and Henry went in and he won the title so again like the EFC is, is huge like the, the yeah. show yeah. itself is absolutely huge and, and again as Danny Henry has showed, it's a great platform to get you. Now, as I like, though, it's like, I remember, Rob, you interviewed um, Ryan Curtis. I'm sure you know Curtis. Uh, I know Curtis, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Curtis was saying, look, I'm not in a rush to get to the UFC. They'll ring my phone. and Because yeah. he, he had the plan as well. And I definitely think that's that's the correct it's strategy. Right, think, you know? Looking at, you look at as well, uh, another teammate of yours, James Gallagher, who has gone to Bellator now. And, huge. you know, he, he's had a huge name in Ireland. But since going to Bellator... Like Bellator are putting a lot of promotion behind James Gallagher, and by the time yeah. the UFC come calling, he's going to be so much bigger than if he just jumps straight from you yeah. know the Irish scene into the UFC. Do you look at James and, and the way he's taking it as well? Yeah, like James, James is just lethal. You know what I mean? He knows for such a young guy, he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you look at our trajectory, right? James is at, is is exactly on the trajectory where I thought I was going to be taken. You know mm. what I mean? He, I think he has like three, four fights more than me. But mm. we had the debut at the same at the same yeah, time. Same, yeah. Same, yeah. Like going back to the start is what I was saying. You know what I mean? Things didn't go as as I'd hoped with with getting fights as consistent. But uh, I I feel like if I if I had gotten all them fights in them, if I had performed, um, I I would have been a bit. You know what I mean? A bit a bit. A bit more relevant to look at to 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 use a like a term for for lack of terms, and I, I think it would have been there. But James is doing it real smart. Like he mm. he's real good with, with with all that social media, which is something that you need to be doing. I, I I'm I'm trying, but I'm just I'm not good at it. You know what I mean? Like taking a selfie with myself yeah. feels weird to me. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Other people doing it. it I, that's that's you know what I mean? It's it's not a weird thing for somebody else to be doing it. But if I, it just feels weird to me, it's, it's something awkward about it. Do you well, get what I'm saying? I, so I, that's I why as well, though, my Franz, social media thing yeah. has took a hit. I think, friends, you have to be true to yourself as well. If that's yeah. not you, that's cool. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, they, yeah. You're, you're on chatting here to us, and your your personality's jumping through exactly, the screen yeah. to us here. So if it's not nice. if it's not your if it's not your thing to do that, you know what I mean? Find your own wrinkle. You know what I mean? Do your talking mm. in the cage. Like I, I don't see as in. And I don't mean this in a derogatory term whatsoever because I absolutely love the man. But we're 100% in the McGregor era where you get people um, like Jeremy Stevenson who try and talk up who just aren't good at it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like Connor is just Connor has better time than a lot of stand up comedians and what he says is phenomenal yeah. but so many fighters try to replicate that and it, just doesn't, it work, doesn't work yeah. so if that's yeah. not you be you is, is the one you know what I mean you are talking in the cage talking of Connor this is, is something you've been involved in some of the biggest fight camps yeah. in the world now at this stage as well so if people are looking at this going I've never seen Franz fight but I, I really recognise him from somewhere it's because you're on all the all the, the behind the scenes with Connor you're one of Connor's main training partners leading up to the biggest fights in MMA and boxing yeah. mm-hmm. well, yeah. so <laughs> how, how does that think- benefit you do you find being around that you're saying you're getting to know the game a lot more Surely that has got to lift your level up to see, well, this is what I can do. This is where I can get to. This is what I can accomplish. Mm. Yeah, but see, what, what I've realized with all that is, see, you, you, you can be behind things, do you know what I mean? But that only lasts mm. so long. Like, do you know any of the training partners from Mayweather Pacquiao fight? That's true. Really no, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not a thing that people think about. It, it feels great being around it. You're like, th- th- this is animal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And th- th- there's little perks to it. But th- this is a fight game. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a solitary thing. Doing, like, being part of all them camps have got, it, it's got me an experience. And, like, people fight for years to be where uh, I've gotten a look in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But personally and career wise it, it it doesn't do much for you you know mm. what i mean yeah. it do, what, what it does for you is uh, it, it gives you the experience it shows you where you could possibly be and how to deal with certain things like uh, like for example like like media stuff mm. like that's just absolutely crazy and I, i've had i've had a good uh, look at look at all that stuff i i think that th- these are little things i took from that but it, in a in, in a thing like fighting, it doesn't, you know what I mean? 
it doesn't do much for you. Yeah. I, I'm try I'm trying to think of how to uh, vocalize this, but I'm not. Mm. For example, right? I won my first uh, my first professional fight, and I was like, I'm lethal. I'm gonna smoke everybody. I'm training with the best guy in the world. Nobody's gonna touch me, right? And I started taking everybody else for granted. Do you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. my second my second professional fight was in. Tokyo, Tokyo yeah, right? China. I went in with this guy. He was uh, he was at the bin in the Ultimate Fighter or some China, and he was a good guy. But two weeks before I went, I, I couldn't even train. Like I was in absolute agony. I was in bits. I was sick. Yeah, and so I went. I was like, it doesn't matter how I feel. I'm just gonna go in here and destroy this guy. I might have been training with Conor McGregor. I'm mm-hmm. gonna smoke anybody that stands before me. You know yeah. what I mean? And. Uh, I went there and it just did not go to plan. The second I stepped into the ring, just my body just did not want to react to what I was telling it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just, I wasn't ready. Do you get what I'm saying? So uh, be, being in these type of positions, being in these camps has its prawns, uh, is, what's it? Pros and cons? Pros and cons. Has them, has yeah. them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has them. its pros and cons. So you, you just need to know what to take out and what to leave in, basically, in these type of things. But, um, it, it, it definitely has given me a lot of experience. I've gotten a lot of smarts. I've been talking to certain people, which I have. I wouldn't have got the chance to talk to uh, if I hadn't been in them positions. But uh, career-wise, it, it, I don't think it, it, it's done much for me, except for showing me a lot of experience. You know what I mean? So, but it, it's not meant to, is it? You're just meant yeah. to be there to to, aid, to help yeah. somebody get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Train. So and that's what. 2017, Franzi, we could say it's been a frustrating year for you. So hopefully yeah. hopefully it, it comes around November, the fight happens. 18, I, I can almost guess this, 2018, I'm sure you're going to want an extremely active year. Mm-hmm. But what's ahead? Mm-hmm. What can we expect? Us, the viewing public here in Ireland, what can we expect what's the plan? of Franz Milano <laughs> 2018? Right. Right. <laughs> Are you ready? No. I'm ready. I'm not gonna break out and stress a little. <laughs> but as soon as soon as I get this fight in, like I am look I'm looking to to do big things. Like I'm looking I'm not gonna th- this was a good mistake to make uh, at the start of my career to um to commit to an organization so early in my career. To get what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's something that I'm not gonna do for now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking I'm not looking to uh, to commit to anybody unless they can promise me fights. Mm, Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, I keep saying this to everybody. I'm not sure if it's pushing it or what, but I, I'd be looking to fight. What? Hey, wait, what's going on with the camera? Sorry. <laughs> I'd be looking to fight like once every two months. To get, I know yeah. once, once, a, once every month would be obviously pushing it. You know what I mean? Mm. Injuries and stuff happen. But once every two months is literally perfect for me to be fighting you know what i'm saying i I feel like i'm an exciting fighter and i i can put out i can put out exciting things if i'm fighting together i don't think people that start getting bored like this guy is fighting all the time because one time the more i'm performing the better i get to get what i'm saying so hopefully and i am planning 2018 to to go like that but i definitely want to fight at home in 2018 not only south africa but ireland also mm. obviously ireland sooner than south africa yeah. do you get what i'm saying yeah. but I, I, that's what i want to do i want to be consistent i want to put out a lot of fights uh in this coming year and uh I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna shock you know what i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna be relevant again if you want to call it <laughs> You keep putting yourself down as the, you're not relevant. I wouldn't agree with that. As I said, when Rob said to me, Franz Milano was coming on, people know your name here, and it's not from as you. It's not just from being the sparring guy, as you correctly said. Who remembers the sparring guy from old fights? So that's a valid point. It's it's yeah. your performances that people uh, here are watching. Yeah. Maybe it's the the casual fan, as we would always call them. Yeah. You need to remind. But um, you know, if if Brave seen sense. They'd allow you to do what, like I can think of other fighters, we don't name them, I can think of other fighters, your training partners, that have fought for Brave and have also fought for uh, Bama Bellator, Cage Warriors, etc. Um, they should allow that. If they can't fill a fight for you, you want to be active, they should allow you to yeah. um, to compete. But I, I understand at the same time why they don't want it. They don't want you no, to shine bright is, somewhere else, you know? The thing is about that, sorry, the thing is about that is, I that, that's what I mean, it was my own negligence, you know yeah. what I mean? Because, uh, 
I that's what I said. I just assumed I was stuck with these guys yeah. from reading the contract. I just yeah. assumed that. But the same guys that had the same contract with me, yeah. I seen so I, was I was seeing them fight on yeah. on Bama and stuff yeah. like that. But so once I figured out maybe I can fight on Bama, it, it was already too late. Yeah, mm. I could have got in like four or five fights in that space of time. Yeah, to get what I'm saying. So I I don't think it's it, it's down to oh Brave wouldn't let, won't let me do this or won't let me do that. Yeah. I just literally never vocalized it. I never yeah. talked to them. I just assumed that I, I i'm in a fight i'm in a three fight contract that can't fight for somebody else yeah. well hopefully you know we, hopefully we do see it back here uh because i tell you man i, I love watching yeah. a fight i've watched a fight as an amateur i've watched a fight as a pro yeah. you know what i mean you're an absolute killer uh, nice. and you're a super nice guy as well and like i said man just be yourself if be taking yourself, a selfie yeah. isn't you do you know what i mean be, be yourself and be what it is but man it's been an yeah. absolute uh pleasure chatting to you here today when you do yeah. get a fight, let us know and come back on and we can talk about the opponent or the promotion or whatever it may be. I definitely will. It's been nice talking to you guys. Uh, we should uh, go out for a vegan lunch somewhere sometime. <laughs> you've lost, somewhere you've lost me. <laughs> I'll eat it. I'll eat it. You've if you lost pay, I'll eat it. No, you've lost me. I need meat on the plate, my man. <laughs> I, I heard steaks were vegan nowadays. <laughs> well, I'll have a vegan steak made yeah. of beef. Cool. <laughs> Listen, Franz, absolute pleasure talking to me, man. Thanks for taking the time. Privilege. Thank you, guys. Have a good Cheers, night. Man. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, there you are, folks. Franz Malambo. And again, if you don't know the name, uh, check it out. Um, uh, I'm a world champion. Um, an absolute uh, lovely guy to yeah, talk to. Great personality. Yeah, very... Made some great points about, um, you know, that's not his persona. So don't let yeah, it be but like persona, he's man, like no. He's a really, really good talker. Yeah, like, he's, he's great. He's a really good talker. That's what I mean. Like, it's it, jumping out of Exactly. Him. Completely jumping out. Like, yeah. one, like I think, honestly, well... We've had so many guys on the show. He was probably one of the most charismatic yeah. guys that we've yeah, had on the yeah. show. Like yeah. people will latch on to that. That was great, yeah, brilliant, was really great good. interview, and it was a pleasure yeah. talking. Though I really like France, and uh, hopefully he gets the fight in November. Uh, but I've got to jump up because I've got to run down. I've got to pick up a photographer who's waiting in reception here. At obviously, fight talk. Faux shoe. So uh, gotta get some Jerry McCurdy. Welcome back to obviously Fight Talk and if you're watching on YouTube you probably notice that there's a third person in the room and it's not Carl Doran um, if you're listening I'm on as big as Carl Doran <laughs> now now leave Carl alone uh, if, if you're listening on um, audio you're going to hear we are now joined by a very familiar face to people especially in this community let's call ourselves in, in Ireland but he's probably very familiar to you as well if you're from the States or you're from Canada or if you're from Australia and you're watching MMA shows and you go geez that photographer is everywhere it's because he is we're joined by Jerry McCarthy Jerry welcome to Osby Hello, Fight Talk Robert Good, nice yeah. to be here yeah. um, so this is something Jerry we like to do the odd time we like to um, as much as we're an MMA podcast Ooh. we like talking to fighters and coaches but we like talking to people who are a vital cog in the wheel yeah, of yeah. our sport um, and that's something you are. You are a photographer. As you, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on audio, press pause, go onto YouTube and listen because yeah. you're going to see some fantastic photographs here. Yeah. Um, but first of all, Jerry, I want to know where it started for you. Where, like, because I, I, I remember I remember seeing and I came along and mm. I started to see you more and more and more. And it went from the, how are we, how we doing? How are yeah. you? To, you know, t- constantly talking to one another and meshing each other mm-hmm. and, and having good chats. And fighting. And fighting and <laughs> traveling to Cork and, and things like that. But uh, well, how did you get in? Because you're a photographer, but how did you get into MMA? Where did the, yeah, the look or combat sports essentially come in? It was qu- quite an interesting start, actually. Um, I used to do a lot of glamour photography. Um, half-naked women, I suppose yeah. you call it. Rob used to do glamour photography too, didn't you? Rob? He used to be in the pictures. Gorgeous. <laughs> and it's interesting. I, I see some, some MMA photographers going the opposite direction now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Transition, yeah. We won't talk about that. So, um, <laughs> so one of them rang me and said, look, would you like to do an MMA show? Mm. No, I'd never seen MMA. Uh, live I hadn't seen it on TV knew nothing about it mm. but I said sure and, and my aim was to get the to get the girls in the paper okay that's what I was there and I did and the one I went to was Cage Contender 16 and I went to the way in the first day and it was this wily guy who was the boss a fella called John Ferguson yeah and uh, John John is a storied um, MMA personality and uh, and from my point of view a nice guy mm. Um, no, I know he's had his issues, but uh, we're still friends. We still talk regularly enough, interestingly, mm-hmm. since that time. But um, it was funny because uh, the highlight the headliner was Paul Daly. Yeah. And uh, John was telling me the joke about, uh, you know, how, how he loves to... That wasn't a joke, how he loves to advertise it. 
and uh, he said he wouldn't be the first West Belfast man to take some text to, to Dublin. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> and it's torn political already. <laughs> so that's the first cut. <laughs> but, um, but it was, and actually, um, another person I met on that show uh, who was announcing was Stuart McQuitty. Oh, yeah, Stuart, yeah, working with Stuart. Yeah. We're good friends with, with Stuart still, and uh, he's a great guy. And in fact, generally, uh, my attraction of MMA is there's so many great guys in it. Yeah, yeah there is. And interesting yeah. people, you know, and that type of thing. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I, took, I, missed, I missed the flying knee, of course, yeah. actually. Yeah. I uh, didn't even get it out of focus, missed it totally. But um, but I got Paul Daly with the girls, and that got into the, to the mainstream media. And John Ferguson thought I was a god of photography. I wasn't, <laughs> but he still says it. <laughs> but um, where is, where is, ah, there they are. There yeah. Um, so I don't, Paul doesn't like the look too one, happy there. So that was the first big one in, in like a newspaper? Yeah, well, the first MMA one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And uh, well, I mean, you know, it has it's the picture that has everything mm. two knockouts and another knockout artist, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just coming off a, a knockout this weekend, a sensational knockout yeah. as well. Absolutely great to see Paul how, back. How hard did you find it, Jerry? Going from you know, essentially glamour model, you're telling people how to stand, how to look, mm. look here, look. So, how was it taking photography like at 100 miles an hour and in, yeah, yeah. in such a fast shots. sport that as you? Freely mm. said, you weren't too knowledgeable. You, you knew mm. nothing about it. Mm. So how difficult was it turning <laughs> up in the cage and trying to take pictures of this? I was totally bluffing. I hadn't a yeah. clue, to be honest with <laughs> yeah. you. I really hadn't and a You're clue. still getting away with it. I'm still getting away <laughs> with it. Yeah. And I still know very little about MMA. I mean, I, I'd be, I, you know, I listen to the podcast here quite a lot. Mm. And, and, you know, when you technically break down fights, like you might as well be talking ancient Greek. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know. I've only been blagging it for a year and a half now. So. But, but quite interestingly, actually, one thing I will say, though, was at the very start, whenever it went to the floor, and I keep saying this, oh, Jesus, right, yeah. okay, wake me up when they stand up again. Yeah. No, I love the floor stuff. Yeah. It's the evolution of yeah. the MMA knowledge. Is that, yeah. yeah, you know, well, and, and, and it's fascinating to mm. watch it, and, and you begin to recognise what people are doing, which is great. But, um, yeah, I, I just liked it. But the thing that got me from the very, very start was the savagery of the fighting mm. contrasting with the sportsmanship after. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, and it was one of the guys actually that day I did a family picture. I forget which fighter it was, but they asked me to come back in and take a family picture, you know, after the win with a belt. Mm. And, you know, and, and, and I began to see, like, these are people, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and I suppose not having seen MMA, I suppose the nearest I came to it was um, that storyline in Friends. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce yeah, Buffer yeah. and in it, yeah. Well, yeah. And, geez, this is yeah. savage. And I, and, and I probably yeah. would have agreed with people who said it was yeah, savage. Yeah. But you very quickly realized, gee, this is a sport, and this is a very, you have to be really dedicated to this sport, yeah. and it's mm. a very technical sport. Mm. And uh, there's great people in it. And um, so you're saying from day one, did you catch the bug? Then was that like your first show was cage contender? What was what did you for you then? Was that I want the next show? I want to be on the next show? Actually, I didn't. Funnily enough, I didn't. Um, it, was, it was quite a long time before I, mm. I, I did more because I, I still, you know. And actually, I, I like to describe my evolution as an MMA or combat sports photographer. That my main focus was the ring girls. Mm. Because that's what I was used to. Mm. Now I think I've done shows where I haven't taken one picture of the ring girls. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's I've recognised that in myself. You know, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, it's um, now you asked what what brought what I could bring from the fashion and the glamour. Mm. I tell you what, I, what I believe that I bring is I like to push for emotional shots. Yeah, and you begin to recognise that. Um, because, uh, you know, I get the sense that a lot of people are, are the receive wisdom as you need to catch a strike. I mean, you mm. catch them as well. Yeah. But it's, about, but it's not. To me, it's about if I see a guy in pain, if I see a guy ecstatic, mm. you know. And, uh, and I just find myself interested now as well. I, I don't tend to be a deadline photographer. Mm. Like, I don't stop after I catch a good punch and stop taking pictures and fire it out. Mm. I just keep shooting. Mm. So my stuff is always very late. In fact, it never goes out live, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I generally find that other people's shots go out straight away. Yeah. And they're up straight away. But come back four weeks later, you'll find them putting up my shots. Mm. You know? Um, and, and, I, and I like to think that's because I get something different to the immediacy of it. Mm. You know? And I, I, hope I, like to, I hope I capture some of the passion of it, you know? And it's interesting, you have, you have Esther Lynn mm. on the 
page there and she'd be quite similar mm. in the sense that she goes for something different yeah you know and um, you know, so in in a way, you're looking for the the art in the moment. You're not you're tr- just trying you're to. not you're not just pressing pressing go. You know what I mean? You want to catch a raw emotion, be it in victory, defeat, pain, agony, joy. Absolutely. That's what you yeah, want. Yeah, that yeah. raw emotion. Yeah. So like, I'll run out for a cage walk if I if I, if I can, and um, and also the other thing is I, I, I'm I don't know maybe I'm too soft for this shit like, but <laughs> like I see in many shows, particularly the bigger shows, that lots of people don't don't actually mind about the preliminaries yeah the prelims yeah I mean I've, I've been at UFC shows where there's been about two or three photographers for the first fight yeah mm. yeah and there should be like ten for the last fight so mm. I mean I'll always go from the first fight to the last and I'll try as hard for the first fight to the last you know, yeah. but then again I'm establishing myself maybe that'll change I carry this I carry the same mantra um, with announcing yeah if I'm announcing um, now don't get me hard it's very difficult to open a show I mean the stage is set the bright lights yeah, are on you make you want, some you noise to build or something it's as well. time and then you go yeah. you know two kids come out you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, and yeah, it's not time for war yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the same time them kids and it's something that Declan Kenna actually does great on um, Cage Legacy he gives the kids the big intro the big they have their photos up and they come out yeah. and like it doesn't matter if you're the first fight of the night or if you're the main event of the night my manager similar to what you're saying Jerry is I want to announce like whatever the fighter's name is, I want to give him the same respect because I respect anyone who gets mm. in there. I want to give them the same respect than the main event mm. guy. Because um, who's to know that in two years' time, a year's time, yeah. three years, whatever the case may be, that they're not going to be the main event, you know? Mm. Um, so that, that's, in a way, I'm just picking what, what you and, see. And I'm mindful as well that like that first fight on the, on the, on the prelims are just as big a fight oh, yeah. for the fighters yeah. and their families and their gyms as the main event yeah 100% you know so I like to, I like to kind of focus on that actually you yeah, evolved then because like I said I got used to seeing you at shows and you were like you were at all the, the everywhere Jerry you were everywhere yeah, like no. I'm convinced I've no life I'm convinced you're a triplet I'm convinced there's two more of you <laughs> um, like even the weekend not past previous you were in you were at um, Bama Bama Cage Warriors and then you were back home for a CRC yeah yeah so, like, the carbon footprint you're leaving, you want to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> no, but, like, how, like, what, like what's, the, what's the drive there? Like, I, I'm going to go back in a little bit because I want to bring up um, when you formed KO yeah. Media and yeah. stuff. But, like, where does that drive come from? Like, the- don't know. Um, but it's a passion, you know. But I, I, I'm just fascinated with the characters in MMA. I'm mm-hmm. fascinated with the coaches, just everything about it, because it is, the whole sport is about passion. Mm. And, uh, and just it's just like the gladiators of old, you know, like you've guys laying it all on the line. It's their job, it's mm. their life, and uh, almost it's a privilege to be allowed to be a part of it. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, well, you know. Really and and I'll tell you this: I'll tell you what it isn't about. It isn't about the money, because mm. there is no money in MMA media, just like as podcasting, you know. All the money in podcasting. Yeah, all we that make money, it yeah. rain. Mm. Yeah, mm. and you know, people ask you how, how do you afford it? You know, yeah. and um, geez, I don't know, I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> But but you um, like for example like shows in the UK mm. can be cheaper than shows in Ireland. Mm. I mean if you if you have a fair idea you're going to get accredited to a show. Yeah. Um, like if you buy your ticket early, and then public transport. Now I always um, I never get I rarely no one say never rarely get a hotel. Yeah. Um, so I just fly over a fight day usually and uh, get there get accredited take the shots, find the McDonald's. Yeah. Start editing because there's a uh, Wi-Fi there. Edit through the night. Get out to the airport at six in the morning and fly out at seven. Wow. Home. So no sleep. No sleep. No. Wow. I get an hour on the plane. That's incredible, isn't it? To think right. that that's like, you know, not I'm not taking away from fighters, but there mm. you are. Like that's that is serious dedication and work, and that's something that you read in a book of you know what I mean. That isn't that right? That's like yeah. something you read in a book that somebody's done this and people go, holy god. So you. The weekend that passed and you were at Bama Cage, was that... Mm. Would, would now, interestingly, also, of course, I stay in flea pits, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, in fact, it was a lovely place near Wembley, like, literally half a mile from Wembley mm. Walk, or less than half a mile. It's like 40 quid. Mm. Yeah. A hotel, you know, it wasn't, like, it was more fault yeah. towers than anything else, yeah. but it was grand. <laughs> it was there, it was safe, it was clean. And uh, so I stayed there on the Friday night after Cage Warriors, and uh, or sorry, after Bama, Bama yeah. and then went across town to Cage Warriors the next day, stayed up all night, slept for an hour on the plane and I meant to sleep the next day it just didn't work out mm. so I just stayed up then and 
where'd you get the energy from because forgive me for saying it you're not the youngest man in the game like so where does the energy come from <laughs> speak for yourself no <laughs> but like no I'm 36 and I'm exhausted well, well it's passion the show. Right? sure I don't smoke drink or do anything yeah. like that so um fair play to you this is something that is this what you mean when you're yeah. saying that's that's the reward is it is seeing fighters see, yeah. and well, do you get do you get uh, fighters contacting you because I remember we had oh, yeah. uh, Gary Morris on the, we had Gary Morris on I think twice but the first time we had him on he was talking about when he first started fighting and there was nobody taking pictures yeah. like mm. he said he, there's no footage of him there's no pictures yeah. and then when he came back and he fought again he was like there's so many pictures now yeah. like I can have like a picture while I'm in the cage do you get many people you know coming up to you and saying thanks for that photo or can I use this photograph you do um, usually actually it's interesting because the guys who are most thankful funny enough straight, um, going back to an earlier part of the chat are the guys early on the card yeah, yeah. you know they're really actually it's very funny there was an opening card or an opening fight on an event lately I won't say which it is like but um, the fighter was kind of mouthing off on social media that uh, there's no fights in me no pictures of me fight yeah, yeah. and it was one where I'd actually just put up a couple of pictures you know and then someone tagged him in it yeah and only four pictures <laughs> <laughs> damned if you do damned if you don't <laughs> uh, but talk to us then Jerry you, you, you obviously you covered a lot of local shows with the yeah. likes of Lara Keane Martin Horgan um, mm. But then came you went from just Jerry standing there taking the pictures to KO Media was formed. Yeah, interesting. You mentioned Lar Byrne there because Lar Byrne is actually um, responsible in a way for KO Media in in different ways. Because I, I think um, I used to have a lot of me modelling shots up on my Facebook page, mm. and uh, Lar was creeping. I have a feeling Lar might. Have... <laughs> Lar, you creep. <laughs> I know, to be fair, like he knew some of the models because they crossed over oh, to yeah. Ring Girls and that. Yeah, of you know, course, course yeah. he did, Larry. And um, so I, I got a phone call <laughs> from Larry anyway, and uh, he said, look, are you available this weekend? Will you do a show? And, um, you know, and I said I would, but I, I think it didn't work out in the end. But uh, but we, we kept up the contact. Yeah. And uh, actually, funny enough, um, I think the next, sorry, I, I thought the first one was a takeover. But before that, I really wanted to do... Um, because I was working a bit in, in, with gyms and, and for different things. In fact, uh, I got to know a gym very well from a mm. white-collar show and boxing show. But um, I kind of got involved in Infusion mm. yeah. in Dublin um, when I was out in the roller disco okay, place. F- fantastic MC, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> and I was kind of involved with the people running it and, and a little bit. And, and then politics came into it and I, and I wasn't allowed to go. Oh right! No, no, sir. Well, I was offered because I was helping out. I was offered a table and a skull of vodka and all yeah. that um, a ringside table, but I, but I wasn't allowed to take pictures. Okay. Oh, mm. So I said, "Fuck that!" And um, can I say to, why? They got to prosecute you for a hug that right? I know. I think they just had enough established photographers, MMA photographers, I'm sure. Right. But um, but but I, I I think the passion came from that. Well, if you're, you I'll know, show you. I'll yeah, show yeah. you. you yeah. Know? Um. But anyway, but, but after that, Lar, as I say, Lar Byrne is very important in, in this whole thing because he, um, like we kept up the contact and he, he got me onto, involved in other shows. And I think that my first next one after Cage, or after Cage Contender was actually Keane's show. Takeover. Uh, the Takeover. Yeah. And uh, the Takeover was, you know, it's a small local show and, uh, you know, it was fantastic to be there. Um, keep going to the Daryl and, and in fact it wasn't of course MMA it was, it was Muay Thai and K1 and uh, you know I, I, I got a love of Muay Thai there I have to say because it's in way because remember at that time I still reckoned the floor stuff was boring mm. so of course there was no floor stuff in Muay Thai you have the Daryl picture now where's Daryl yeah so uh, yeah and I was One lucky picture. enough actually to take um a picture of um, just as a guy that I admire a lot, uh, yeah. Daryl Flood. He's a he's a killer. Like he's going to be a superstar, yeah. in yeah, my opinion. Hundred percent. Yeah. There's Steph down there, is it? You know. No. Oh, oh, yeah, there he is, in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, congratulations, by the way, Steph and Claire. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, congrats. congrats. Little baby Carter. Sorry, go on. A, yeah, there's people. Uh, I, I remember at that show, I was announcing that takeover, yeah. and I remember when that kick landed. I remember Lara Bourne said, "No way, you caught that in camera." Yeah. And you took the camera out and went, boom, there you go. Very nice. um, <laughs> Looks like he's pirating the shoulder, doesn't he? It's, Steph. Yeah. He's <laughs> he? pirating the car. Yeah. Yeah. Got damn Romanian in the corner with his camera. Um, but yeah, that was a fantastic picture. Yeah. But see that now, Jerry, you're saying you 
You will, you, uh, that Daryl, fantastic fighter. I certainly agree with you. Do you have that? Like, you know Daryl now. You photograph Daryl. Yeah. Can you almost tell by looking at him that much that this is the time to get the, you know, get the camera ready. Here we go, here we go. Not so much. Actually, yeah. I mean, uh, like, uh, you would have to mention the, the, the king, in fact, the queen of Muay Thai photography, C. Gordon. Yeah. Gordon. And, like, her stuff is just phenomenal. Yeah. But she, she fights it. She understands it. Yeah. She's doing it ages. I mean, there are people I look up to a lot. C is definitely one. Mm. Um, I also like, obviously, Dave Fogarty, who's, who's mm. the king of Irish photography, let's face it. And now almost the king of international photography. Ginger Beard. Ginger Beard. Ginger Beard yeah. Yeah, 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 He's got followers. so many followers. And wedding photographer, Dave was. My wedding wed- photographer. My, my wedding photographer. Oh, Jesus. There yeah. you go. <laughs> well, I, I knew a fight was going to break out, so I said, let's get a fight, <laughs> let's get a fight <laughs> photographer in. Body break. But no, it, like, I agree. C is, is, is amazing. Um, and da- as all the, everyone you name, Dave is fantastic. Andy Tierney, Nicky Johnson. Yeah, all um, of them, yeah. Uh, they're, all, they're all, all there, and they're all showing um, the passion for the sport as well. And the support of the local shows, which is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They all do, you know. But uh, you asked the question, like, did, did I understand? No, that was just luck. Was it? Yeah. What a picture, like, and yeah. just pure luck. It was a, uh, absolutely fantastic. Because I remember the morning after that, I was actually going through, it was probably Steph's dodgy pirate there. Um, <laughs> I was going through, and I was trying to screenshot the picture, the sanctuary kick. Um, but um, I couldn't even screenshot it, but you you put up a, the, that amazing um, photograph of it. Yeah. But then, Jerry, right, you got you got to turn... UFC came about, and yeah. all this, and, and, and I, I love... I, I don't think you're sure, maybe you don't want to tell the story, but... At a lot of local shows here, like the likes of um, the big shows here in Ireland, like Cage Kings and Cage Legacy and and the Takeover and all yeah. these shows, when the fight's over, clan wars and everything, the photographers jump up and run into the cage and take the photos. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened to the UFC. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know. Actually, uh, <laughs> that, that's actually quite interesting and, and it's quite a contentious thing. Um, I think it was just... No, no, well, it wasn't I, deliberate. I think you done it in an accident in a way. You just I this, did, this did, is the did. run of the show. But um, you know, no, no, in, in different shows, you know, um, like I know, for example, Bama, mm. which was pretty much the second biggest show in Ireland for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like Bama, not, when I started my first Bama show, not only could you not go into the cage, you couldn't go beside the cage. Yeah. And this kind of irked me, I have mm. to say, and. Uh, Apologies, Matt Bourne, if you're listening to this. We had our discussions about this in the past, but it's all good now. And it was explained to me that uh, the reason why was that on previous shows, every photographer in the place ran into the cage. Yeah. And that is clearly all wrong, you know, yeah. for many reasons. But, um, you know, and I personally believe too far east is west. So mm. you don't, you just, ex- you should just explain to guys, this is what you do. You don't move from here. And if some fella doesn't, follow the rules out he goes you know yeah. you know i would never run into a cage now having said that there are some shows where not i don't, I don't know if i've ever been actually employed as a photographer um but you know when you say right you're the you're the main photographer the yeah. official photographer so yeah. you go into the cage and no one else can and that's fine for me you mm. know um but uh, there's been other shows like um like actually cage legacy is one of them where I'm generally, but I mean, that doesn't mean no one else can go in, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And in fact, um, I remember when Peter, that fantastic fight between Peter Queeley and Dickie Dalton. Um, now, I know that Dave was there, Gingerbeard. Yeah. The, the number one was there to um, to take pictures of the SPG fighters, uh, as uh, naturally enough. And, uh, you know, I kind of conceded the number one spot, if mm. you know what I mean, to Dave for those ones. No, conceded is probably too strong for it. I got pushed out of the way once you're looking. That's your luck. Dave is doing that on, on May Mac, for God's sake. Push yeah. people out of yeah, Great no, stuff. No, no, no. But, but, I mean, I have no issue with that. I mean, Dave is, Dave, Dave, Dave is the man and he's been around for you. And a fighter. Well, you know? it's, it's a thing. It was like Franz Mamo earlier saying, I want to stay revving. You're the man as well, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, you're, nah, yeah, Jerry, you are. You're there everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Jerry. You know, I'm a Johnny yeah. come lately. But yeah. let's look at a couple of oil pictures. But, but um, to, to, go on, to, sorry. I was going to finish that about getting to the cage, but the UFC story. So the UFC, I find, is an absolutely, without doubt, the best organised show mm. out there. And, and the press and everything is absolutely brilliant. Not saying the others aren't well organised, but this is another well, level it's of stuff. The biggest, it's the big show. It's the, big it's the biggest in the world. It's big, yeah. I mean. it's big time. But, uh, and, and it's quite interesting because you're told, right, there's a bench below the, the, the octagon. Mm-hmm. And during the live action, you must, your, your knee must not leave that bench. Okay. Now, I was always um, pretty much the last photographer in the door, I think, so I usually got a terrible spot. Mm. 
like by the cage door. But it's terrible in some ways, but not in other ways. Mm. So if you step back a bit, you can take the fighter coming out. And um, so wasn't it? And remember, forget which fight now. It was definitely an SPG fight. Was it uh, Artem or Gunny? And uh, wish you wish you have seen you see Dublin, was it? No, no, it wasn't Dublin. No, no, no. It was somewhere else. It was uh, I think it might have been Rotterdam actually. Okay. And uh, so at the end, John spotted me. Mm. You know, the only Irish, I think I was the only, I think Dave might have been there as so well. I was the only Irish guy mm. near the door. So, and I was trying to go in to get a team shot at the end. Yeah. And he kind of stepped over to the side. So I kind of slightly crawled, crawled into the cage. <laughs> and uh, there was murder. Yeah. And rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I broke yeah. the rules. I have no issue yeah. with that. But, uh, and interestingly, I got two talking stuff from security and from media control. Oh. But that's a good thing. Yeah. No, yeah. it is. Because yeah, I've yeah. seen other shows where people have been all over the place standing up. Yeah. Doing all types of wrong shit, mm. tearing around the place, and, and nobody they didn't says know a you word. Didn't mean it. Like they, you could have been anybody. Like mm. they, they didn't know you didn't mean to step in. Like obviously, yeah. your intention wasn't to to break the rules. You just no. you made a mistake. But, but uh, you know, we won't be doing people. it again. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a picture behind us here, and I'd imagine this was used in Gunnar Nelson's appeal uh, in defeat of this fight. This um, this picture is showing a horrendous <laughs> double eye gouge, and I'm right in saying you're the only photographer who caught it, yeah. Yeah, and, and in fact, I was kind of pleased because, um, like, two of, two, two of the photographers that I admire the most is Esther and mm-hmm. um, Per from um, USA Today. Mm-hmm. And Per is a really cool guy, except for the time when he shared my uh, my, my uh, Wi-Fi uh, dongle and he, and he used about a, fucking a third of the whole thing. <laughs> I said, use it lightly, like, there's four gigs gone by the end of the night, but uh, such is life. But anyway, but but they were both there and they missed it. Now, yeah. Per actually got the fantastic shot of the last punch on the ground yeah. through the legs. I mean, that's just uh, he, the guy just says super stuff, you know, yeah. brilliant. But uh, but I, I was the only one who got that, you know. And actually, it's an interesting story back to the hotel thing, because um, I stayed the first night, but the second night, because I, I came for the weigh-ins and the second night, um, I was staying up mm. and the flight was, uh, you know, whatever in the morning. So. I actually met some guys at the presser after and they said, look, come to, uh, you know, we're, we're getting a taxi. So mm. We'll share it. I said, Grant, come over to the Pfizer Hotel. So I did. And um, so I was uh, typing away, uh, sorry, editing away. And the two guys, our media guys were beside me and they saw that picture. So I oh, yeah, leave that one up on the screen. Mm. And they called over a guy, you know. It was uh, Gunny's father. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> you know, so, um, so he came, oh, my God. And then he called over more. And over comes Gunny and, and John Kavanagh. And mm. uh, so then he says, um, you know, um, email this to us. Mm. Uh, Evidence. And I said, grand, and uh, just credited it. <laughs> 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 so that was probably my most viral picture. Yeah. And, and I think that was kind of the start of the like the decision if you like or a part of the start of it to actually appeal it yeah because it was so obvious yeah, you know because yeah. it's not a, you can't hardly see it in the video it's no. strange isn't it i didn't see it at first like, i didn't see it no. i watched if i watched the replay i, I think when was doing this i only the only time i seen it was when i actually seen you post this picture on twitter yeah 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 and i was like what and i, I had a look back there's another one there um of toy fighter uh Lithuada as well yeah, actually, Thai is interesting. Again, I see Gordon is, is the queen of, of Thai photography, mm. but I was down in Siam, Siam Warriors in Cork, oh, which, uh, thanks to Martin Horgan, who's a, you know, so great, he's a great MC as well, that Martin great Horgan. Great. <laughs> Watched a film last night, May, as Martin Horgan was in it. That's right, yeah, Horgan's Weird. in as a copper, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, holy shit, that's Martin Horgan. Yeah. I hear he did very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he had no lines, but he done great. Yeah. yeah but, so there we are, go on, talk to us. So anyway... Um, and I was kind of quite nervous about this shot actually because, uh, like I, I, I was, I did have enough cop on to see it as a big religious, practically and spiritual and cultural yeah, yeah, in the dance. thing around in yeah. the dance. And um, your man was the big, the big star, yeah. uh, Little Wada, and he, like he was doing it, and I said, "Fuck it, I'll try it." And I shoved the camera under him yeah. and took that picture, and I was kind of nervous about it, and and his look almost looked kind of like uh, <laughs> menacing. Yeah, yeah. menacing, but uh, in actual fact. Uh, a couple of days later, anyway, Martin messaged me and he said, look, uh, you know, do you see who's using your picture as a profiler? Yeah. And holy yeah. God, you know, and... Uh, nice 4K likes. Very nice. You know, 4K likes. And, 
And, and, but but I, I begin to realise there's, there's life outside. There's lots of sports and combat sports. Yeah. It's not just MMA. There's, yeah, yeah, of you know, and obviously boxing I have a big interest mm. in as well. But but Muay Thai is just colossal, you know. And I have a great uh, and it's, and if anything, like there's almost better characters. I won't say better, but different characters in Muay Thai. You know, like Sadonkey is is just mm. superb and not job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no you no know, job. and Martin, it doesn't smile, but he's great. Mm. And, and Aaron, boom, boom, brown. I mean, yeah. oh, there's, there's, Aaron's like, been a guest there. You yeah. know, it is, and it's it's. Um, this is the thing: is it's something that you said at the very start, Jerry? You said before you went to your first uh, show. Mm. Your experience with friends when Pete wanted to become the ultimate fighter, Monica's uh, fiance. I think. Where you're going with that? But um, you thought it was barbaric. You thought it was yeah, yeah. by savages. Mm. But yeah, so in a way, you're the perfect, the uneducated mind to what the sport is. Now you're involved in the sport, and you have so much respect, mm. and you realise that the people are in this game, the fight game, are some of the like some of the nicest people yeah, I know on this earth are the people who step into the ring, step into the cage, mm. are coached. They're some of the nicest people you could possibly mm. meet in the world. And I honestly think that's a big part that... It's, it's great that you mm. came into it, and now you yeah. are such a big part of Irish MMA, Irish Muay Thai. And you, you undervalue yourself in that sense. Yeah, you are... you are like Because you're, you're talking about Lara Bourne. I rang Lara, I was talking to Lara the other day, and I said, uh, we're going to have Jerry on the show to talk about photography. Mm. And he went, brilliant. He said, that brilliant brilliant angle to come at like yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. because it's something that your work is appreciated from me as the, just taking mm, a picture mm. of me although you get me to pause but I'm, I'm terrible at glamour you have to catch me in action if you ask me to smile I go <laughs> I'm terrible <laughs> but ca- yeah catch me eating <laughs> catch me eating the ice cream s- s- mm. shouting somebody's name and, and, they're, and they're good but you catch her you catch her the essence of the sport so well like what C. Gordon does like what Dave does like what Andy Nikki, yep. Esther Pear what all they do is there's an essence there's an art to what you do what I want to ask you is the equipment the hardware yeah. Yeah. Anyway, here's here's um, there's some of the hardware. Look at this. Most. That's that's not a selfie stick, like. Yeah. No, no it's a no. Nikon uh, D5 and uh, 7200, which I use mostly for MMA. Mm. Um, and it's uh, yeah, equipment is important. Like I spend a lot. I spend too much on equipment actually. Mm. Um, like you, you know that old car sticker thing. My other, my second, my other car is a Porsche. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's pretty much the top of the range Nikon camera. Mm. And my spare is the second top of the range. Yeah, wow. Camera, you know. So what's in my hand there retail is the guts of 10 grand. Holy lama. Guess who we're mugging on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from wow. town, he's from Bally yeah. Brack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, <laughs> so again, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of thing about, you know, who's good and who's bad and who's... Th- I don't look at it that way. Everyone's yeah. different. Yeah. Everyone has got a different style. Like, you know, you could never confuse, say, C. E. Gordon's pictures. Mm. Never. You could never confuse Dave Fogarty's pictures because you see the notorious in them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. No, Dave, Dave is the man. Dave me and my man. wife, actually. My screensaver on my phone is from Dave. Yeah. You know, Dave's a great guy. And, and I have to, I I have to recognize, of course, that Dave, like C, is also a fighter. Yes. Yeah. So he understands it a lot yeah. more than I ever will, you know. Yeah. But, but we're all different. It's different styles. And you know what? Like, there's room for everybody. Mm. You know, I mean, there's so many, there's eight sides to a cage. I mean, uh, you see, we look at the, the uh, Gunny picture. I mean, the guy behind him can't get that picture. Yeah, yeah. So, That's... and again, that was kind of like part of your discussions with Bama as well, because because of their experience with people running into the cage, they just excluded every photographer mm. from cage yeah. side. But then it actually, in my opinion, that kind of affected the picture's coming out because with one photographer only one guy can, can get, get it shot, yeah. so if he was behind Gunny there that there wouldn't have been a picture at all of us you know yeah. and and there's room for like plenty of guys and and I have to say as well um, both in the local shows and the international shows the camaraderie mm. among the photographers is great it's, it's the same as the media mm. now it's absolutely competition Jerry pointed at us when he said the media so you know, yeah we're not Go on, yeah, we are. Yeah, we, we are. are. Yeah. Very serious. Yeah. But, but, the, but the point serious. is, like, of course, everyone wants to get the best picture. Yeah. But yet, people are very supportive. Yeah, you know, you yeah, see yeah. people lending batteries and plugins, and you know me. I always bring a an expansion. I always rob your charger. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. and except for per robbing all my um, mobile data, but we'll. <laughs> There's a picture there, Rob, with James Gallagher, and you, before we start recording, you said this picture actually has a meaning to you because the reason why. 
it looks like JK. Actually, just just to go back a little bit there so, again. Uh, yeah, just go that go that one first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was actually dead chuffed with this, and um, it was at the uh, Tree Arena mm-hmm. um, after James one of James's big Bellator wins. Actually, against uh, Pretty Boy Taylor. Pretty Boy Taylor, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was there, and you know the official guy goes in for the team shots, and then I just saw John and James, and John was kind of looking around the ring, and then he saw me. And he, and he said to James, and he caught James, said, right, there, that, that's, look at him, you know? And we got a great picture afterwards. Yeah. So which is what you're saying, Jerry, in so many ways is gods recognize gods. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that he said, I wouldn't but, say uh, that. But the point we'll is, though, I would say that. you know, when you come from a position that, you know, you don't even know if anyone knows who you are. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of You know, so it's a good feeling, I would have yeah. to say, you know. Or maybe it's just the only photographer he saw, who knows. <laughs> and what was the other picture you wanted to point out quickly there? Um, just going back um, yeah, to my very first one. Yeah, stop there, Johnny Jitsu. Oh, it was really interesting Jitsu because... What a man. You know, that, that, that was my first ever show. Mm. And, uh, you know, just to go back to realise years and years later that Johnny, who I got to know well, um, you know, he's a great guy. He's, I know he's a friend of the show, contributor. And, uh, you know, to realise that I actually saw him, met him. Well, I didn't meet him, but took his picture yeah. years ago. And I know that you have to spend years doing it and then you build up a body of work. Um, the other one as well, um, I know we're probably running out of time no, here. Uh, yeah, and and Peter Queeley is another one. Yeah, we're going back and forth. We're going this way. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, we've seen that. <laughs> uh, Esther. <laughs> yeah, just to say, it's really kind of also, that's uh, Abdul Karim Al Salwadi, who's a huge, James huge James. MMA fighter in the Middle East. He's after my job. Yeah, great, great pronunci- pronunciation <laughs> yeah. of that name. <laughs> and I would have met him at Brave MMA because yeah. um, I was over in, you know, and, and it's great, you know, it's kind of somewhat satisfying to me, if not the bank manager, mm. you know, because a, a lot of fighters are kind of taking up the, you see the logo everywhere, you know. Yeah. Mm. Actually, everywhere. getting back to the logo, because we didn't even tell that story about, um, you know, so I thought, like, what do we do, what do we do? And if, if there's one thing about Jerry McCarthy, I love me word plays. Yeah. <laughs> Has to be a word. Copyright play. infringement. Coming <laughs> up. Copyright <laughs> infringement coming up. So there was another kind of logo that was a bit like that, but it was the other way around. Okay, what are you on about? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I just had, I said, and, and also I was doing Muay Thai, K1, a bit of boxing, mm. MMA. So what was what what was common among all those sports? Oh yeah, the knockout. The knockout. Yeah. So that could be anything. So did K1? I actually sent it to Lar Bird, Lar, who's central to my story, and uh, I'll never forget it. Sorry, I won't be able to make the show down there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I sent it to Larry. He said, oh, yeah, that's great, yeah. So I stuck yeah. it on for the first one. Yeah. Cool. And actually, um, uh, you know, I, I, I just have forget to say it anyway. So just the other week, hit 6,000 likes oh, on excellent the stuff. page. Very good. Excellent. And, and, uh, and every so single, not one of them. Uh, sorry, when I started, I just put up something on my own personal page. Look, I'm starting this. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you want to like it, like it, that's it. Not one message went to someone inviting them to like the page. Not yeah, one yeah, was yeah. purchased. I wouldn't even know where to Unlike buy them. Unlike us, we were whores. Yeah. But uh, because, uh, you know, and I, and I know as well that, so if you're on the page, you actually like it yeah. to some degree. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, and 6,000 is pretty respectable. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, and yeah. tell people where they can find you. It's KO Media on Facebook, but on Twitter is the handle yeah KO so. TV media or something you'll find yeah. it anyway. you'll find <laughs> it's it. totally being KO media and you'll find them yeah. uh, Jerry I'd say I've talked to you so many times to so many shows um, we've travelled to shows together and we've burned the ears off one another at night time mm. talking about this sport and the sports that we love but if the fighters um, the fighters do tell you but I'll tell you you are a huge part of this sport yeah. about Muay Thai kickboxing boxing MMA you're at every show how you get the energy is beyond me but um, honestly you're such a vital part to this sport and putting it out to the wider audience mm. so I thank you for taking yeah, pictures yeah. of me and taking pictures of shows and fighters and promoting the sport that we love mm. here so well done and, and yeah. it's it's many more pictures ahead yeah. and, and the media thing is interesting because um, you know people do it for the love of it mm. some people earn a living from it Mm-hmm. Like like that other your your sister show that I turned on because I said I'd come on here instead. Uh, yeah. MMA yeah. aired sister show. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 right now. <laughs> but uh, I went um, uh, like effectively people do it for the love of it. Yeah, ninety percent of the media from what I can 100%. gather. Yeah. There's, oh, there's a few pretend that they earn lots from it. They don't. Mm. And I'm talking about quite senior people in MMA media. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but. 
for, from my point of view, like the, the photography side of the fence, if you like, like a, there was a guy in, in uh, there was a, a joint promotion in Dublin some while back. There was two different promoters Bombardo, on the same night. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Columbo there figuring <laughs> shit out. <laughs> I thought uh, I actually didn't know what it was. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And one of, them, w- one of them said, um, look, you know, here's your spot outside the railings. Yeah, you know, I so oh, we were there as media. I said, I said, so I said, look, I, I you know, and by the way, yeah. like, I mean, uh, like a promotion has every right to say that. Mm-hmm. I have absolutely yeah. no yeah. argument with us. Their show, we're guests at the show. Mm-hmm. I mean, where I sit is cage side. You, you pay hundreds to mm-hmm. get there. No, I work yeah. bloody hard from the first point to the last, but we're there for free. And um, but the second side of the promotion, and, and I just didn't stay, you know, because um, mm-hmm. yeah. I was actually skipping a family dinner. Like, uh, and we only meet, we only all meet yeah. once a year, and yeah. I was skipping it. I said, Fuck this, we're a game of soldiers, I'll go back, you know. Mm. And uh, but then I came back for the second promotion, and um, and I was just chatting to the head of PR for it. And he said, and I said, Look, I just don't understand this philosophy mm. about like have every de- half decent photographer there and you know, keep them their spot. And this all promotes you, it's free promotion, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. like yeah. they promote, and the better the quality the yeah. more promotion you get. 100%, and he yeah. says, I don't understand the philosophy of just mm. having one photographer. Yeah. And, you know, we want as many good photographers as, as we can get. Yeah. And, and the point he made was that video will be watched for a few days. Yeah. yeah. Pictures are there for years. Yeah. 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 And they, sure, value, they pictures, value photographs look, more than you video. You look at pictures of Muhammad Ali from when he's oh, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And they're they're yeah. iconic. So 100%. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, no, Jerry, absolute pleasure having you in. Um, I'm glad you... And you're regular contributor to the show in your own way as well with yeah. you know telling us the light was uh, do this to that do this yeah, to that you yeah, know you're always listening and always staying again today fucked up the light and robbie really um <laughs> but no you always are and uh, like i said great man get following him like his pictures check it out um this has been a packed obviously fight talk 82 uh shout out as always to feel uk check them out and use air code fight talk to get 10 percent off people 10 percent off um to mma mix.com they're obviously good because they're with obviously fight talk and to fight star ireland the fighter's choice everything you need under two roofs and a big congratulations to stefan Clare oh, on the arrival of guys. little baby yes. carter hashtag triffo um, <laughs> but yeah this has been 82 he's been jerry mccarthy mm-hmm. he's been robert pallon i've been Noel o'keefe 82